Good morning, everyone. I am Kelly York, and I am an ELA professional learning specialist with Metro RESA, partnering with the High Museum in the Georgia Department of Education to help us learn how to read art like a text. Hmm, what does that mean? Have some conversation about how do you actually help kids get into, through, and beyond the text. Go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so we're gonna share. You'll hear me say we're gonna spirit share. That means share as the spirit moves you and the spirit should move you. So when we think about kindergarten through second grade kids, why do we think we might wanna help them to read art like a text and figure out how do we go into, through, and beyond the text for that age group. Can you spirit share for me? Well, I was thinking about, first of all, looking at how, what that art reminds them of. You know, how, how can they kind of make a connection with that art that we're looking at so that we establish a base okay. for them to move up from there so, into analyzing. So mm -hmm. Didi said we're gonna establish a base and we're gonna help them to understand that build on hers for me? Well, like Dee Dee says, you're going to establish that base when you're working with a child with uh, a book, okay. a primary child with a book. You're going to introduce that book by showing it to them, um, showing them the different parts of the book, and start asking them questions about what they're seeing. So then they can project some of what they're seeing perhaps into the future to try to predict and I would think you'd use the same strategies with a piece of art. Absolutely. So as we go through, we want to be mindful of how we'll be evaluated. Um, and we want to be really thoughtful when we get to the point where we're planning um, our teacher performance standards. We're going to be focusing on instructional strategies today. And if, in fact, we improve our instructional strategies and if we're attentive to them, during planning, then we can kind of simultaneously create academically challenging environments and they will work hand in hand. So our goals for today is that we'll walk away being able to deepen our understandings of how to get kids into, through, and beyond the text. And we're gonna do that with um, the LEAP strategy and I'll explain more of that in a minute. And then we're also going to understand um, better strategies for how we'll help students to read art like a text to ultimately enable them to write. So when we think visual literacy, right? Reading art like a text that's just what it is. When I say literacy, what comes to mind? Reading. Reading. Writing. 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 Reading and writing. Reading and writing. Reading and writing. Reading and writing. Lindsay? Same. Same. <laughs> Reading and writing. Reading and writing. But then when I say visual, what comes to mind? Reading. Reading. Seeing. Seeing. Words. Words. Being. Seeing. Understanding. Understanding. Interpreting. Interpreting. Lindsay? Associating. Associating. Cassandra? Analyzing and seeing. Analyzing and seeing. And at K2, they can do all of those things. It looks a little differently. So visual literacy, guys, is the ability to interpret and make meaning of the relationship between language and images. Let's think about that. It's having the skills that we use in linguistic literacy, which is printed text, right? To interpret and negotiate the meaning behind visual images. It aids with the comprehension, right? It also is a way to get them in and take them through a particular text. So let's go and see how we're gonna do that. Help students to recognize the relationship between visual images and everyday lives. We're gonna help engage and stimulate students with the content, and then it helps to enhance their reading and writing skills. So ding, 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 give yourselves a round of applause because you all got the right answer, right? We added value to that. Did you guys know that in the same, in the same 
instance. One glance at a picture gives you 48,000 times more possibility to retain it than if you read the same text coupled with that picture. It stays longer. Images go directly into our long-term memory. Words, what are we doing? At K2, we're grappling with what letter is that? Is it a B or is it a P or is it a D or is it a Q? So that's normal developmentally. However, we want them to retain the information so we can continue to build. Why? Because they're learning to read. And in learning to read at this point, images help us to take their level of interpretation to a whole nother level, okay? And so images are the stimuli that we're gonna use for writing today. They give students experiences. And for a minute, you guys are gonna wear student hats. So you'll be participants and we'll flip flop between your participant hat and your facilitator of learning just to think through what might be some bridges and barriers that you run into when you think about images that um, may have a lot of details. Um, what are some barriers that we might run into there? Visual barriers. Visual barriers. Okay, when you say visual barriers, what it in expand that thing? Well, it could me. be all it could be different kinds of visual barriers. It could be actually a visual problem that someone may be experiencing. Okay. Or it could be um, that what they're looking at they're not familiar with, so it's a new concept for them yes. that they're having to learn. Didi, what do you teach? I'm a speech pathologist. Ah, <laughs> okay. Any other thinking ab around that? limited life experiences, limited social experiences when they're looking at something so they can't make that connection. Because they don't have anything to pull from. And so also as we are transitioning and broadening our scope with our standards, images also give us a way to take kids on those virtual field trips to create the experiences to allow them to pull readily from those, once we pair them with text, these are just helping to enhance, by analyzing the images, it's helping to enhance their close observation skills. So that close reading, we're helping them to do that with the images. All right, now, are you, who's, raise your hand, you ready to take the leap? All right, Paula, help me out. What are we gonna do when we look? What am I going to do when I look? I'm going to try to notice some details. All right. Georgia, what am I going to do when I evaluate? Well, I'm going to look to see maybe if I'm in K2 to see whether I like the picture or not, whether I am impressed with it or sure. whether I'm familiar with it, whether I think it's a nice picture or not a nice picture. Absolutely. And tell me your name again. Melanie. Melanie, what are we going to do when we analyze? I'm looking at the picture to see what the author intended hmm. and what it means to me. What story it's telling, huh? Okay. And then, tell me your name again. Gina. Okay, Gina. We're going to produce. What happens when we produce? Uh, I'm going to create something. I'm going to make something. And so as teachers, it's important for our product to actually be aligned to those standards for us to assess did they get it? Where were some misconceptions? And where maybe do we need to tweak it, stop, and make some adjustments? And so in doing that, um, we're gonna use the LEAP strategy in order to navigate how we're gonna analyze some, a sculpture actually, but I'm, I'm gonna give it to you here. But how we're gonna analyze this and look deeper to see what was the author's intended meaning. I purposefully don't have the title on there. Um, and I would encourage you if you're doing this or when you're doing this with your students that you leave the title off at first. We wanna give them uh, from the beginning as little as we can to not get in the way of their thinking to allow their thinking to just soar. There are no wrong answers. If they wanna say that that's a stick because they don't know what a staff is, it's okay. If they wanna say those are two dogs, we're okay with that. Because when we're looking, we're just 
noticing. Right, Paula? Right. We're just noticing. So let's go. So we're going to use that strategy. All right. Before you dig into that, if you look at your training manuals, you'll see at step two, I have the task there. Always um, try to start with beginning with the end in mind so the students know where they're going. How many of you have had the kids who say, what are we doing today? Why are we doing this? Is this for a grade? I don't want to be her partner, right? We have that. Am I the only one? No. no, okay. Or I don't know, what does this word mean? Why are the, right? So starting with the end in mind helps us to maybe get everybody in the same boat so that we can end up in the same location. Maybe not at the same time, but at least we're in the same boat, right? Boats are compartmentalized, and so we can go different places within the boat, but we want to arrive and be going in the same direction. So our learning task that we're going to start with, I want you guys to put on your participant hats. Let's see it. Whew. Paula, you didn't put yours on. Didi, neither did you. Cassandra, <laughs> neither did you. And Lindsay, neither did you. All right, they're on now. So last night, someone broke into the museum and mixed up all of the art descriptors. And the art descriptors class are the things that will tell us about these individual pieces of art, right? The images, whether it's a photograph, but they're the descriptors that give us some information about the artist. It gives us information about background knowledge. It gives us information about what they were thinking when they created it, okay? But somebody broke into the museum and mixed them all up. Oh no, cried the museum curator. We have a thousand students coming tomorrow. They have to analyze all the uh, descriptors to see if they're true, to see if the facts are true. They're working on their projects. Can you guys help the curator locate the descriptors for your piece of art? Thumbs up. We're going to use the leap strategy quadrant, you guys. You guys are going to use words to create a shape, a story, a shape story of any object of your choosing to help the museum curator locate the descriptor for your work of art. So on your tables, you have your work of art, okay? We're gonna use that strategy to go through. Once, I want, once you do that, you guys can either imitate one of the examples that's in your training manual or you can select one of your own. So you don't necessarily have to do, that really is supposed to be a dog, that first image, okay? It's some animal of sort, because animals what? We have search dogs who help us to locate things and find things. The sun might be above our descriptor that we're trying to find that matches our piece of art to really get us there and highlight, here I am, right? The star, same thing, leading to the direction because the goal is, this is our work of art, and we're helping who? What's that word? What is a curator? It's the person that collects the, um, collects and displays the artwork. Lindsay looks like she doesn't agree. Guys, turn and talk to your neighbor and find out, what's a curator? All right, Georgia, what's a curator? Keeper of the museum. Keeper of the museum. So we're in agreement that we're gonna help the person who keeps the art safe in the museum to find the descriptor that goes with our work of art. Ready? What I'd like for you to do, I'm gonna set the timer for 30 seconds. For 30 seconds, all I want you to do, and you should each have your own on your table, okay? All I want you to do is to just look and notice. You can write on your picture. You can use your white space on your manual. But I'd like for you to just write, what do you notice? What do you see that's happening? What are some hidden secrets in there? What's the story that the artist might be trying to tell? OK? 30 seconds, go. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right. So what I'd like for you to do is make sure that you turn over your manual and that your leap strategy quadrant is up. 
clap one time when you have it. Didn't get all clapped, so you there? It's okay. All right. So now in this first box that says look, I'd like for you to take your 30 second glance writing and I'd like for you to draw images that came to mind as you were doing the 30 second glance. You have an additional 30 seconds to get that done. You may begin. Stop. Okay. In the essence of time, just share one thing with your neighbor that you captured in writing and also with your drawings. One thing, one thing per, a piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I have keep I use the word so strong. It was really about the kind of protection and keeping. Uh -huh. And I couldn't tell if this was hiding on the back. It was hard to tell what this was called. Okay. Was okay. Called. okay. Mm -hmm. And so I saw okay. the sun over the bottom. I just saw the dark. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So the look phase got us into our text. What is our text today? Culture. Good, Paula. That was the right answer. Give yourself Culture. a round of applause. <laughs> All right. And so when we, um, now that we're into the text, how are we going, now we're getting ready to go through the phases that will take us through the text, okay? And so the through, um, we're going to start with evaluate. What do you think this sculpture is about? What makes you say that? What message do you think the artist is trying to tell? And I want you to use your five senses in order to think about, hmm, if I were in the scene that is captured here in my artwork, what might I hear? What might I see? What might I smell? What might I taste? What might I touch if I were inside of that sculpture? Okay, and so now I'm gonna shift your participants, but I'm gonna shift to my facilitator hat just for you. As a facilitators of learning for this age group, you would want to um, really, really kind of hone in here on that evaluation stage where they are using their five senses. That's something that's familiar to them. That's something that they readily use every day and their imaginations are rampant. So you may have to make some norms for where they can and can't go in terms of their, <laughs> their thinking and what they might think smell because there's some words we may not want to smell on here if you look at the, the sculpture, right? And so you wanna think about that as a facilitator of learning, how would you set this up so that you kind of um, get wholesome answers, right? <laughs> and um, graphic, yes, but wholesome, all right? So take, um, take about a minute to just jot down something that you see as you're looking at your art, something that you see if you're imagining that you're in that piece of art, something that you see, something that you taste, something that you feel, something that you smell, something that you hear. Bring your answers to a close. All right, so we've already gone another layer down into reading our art like a text. We've peeled back another layer of meaning because now we're getting deeper into maybe thinking about, well, why exactly um, did the artist decide to set this scene up, okay? The title of this particular work is A Friend in Need is a Friend Indeed. Okay, a friend in need is a friend indeed. How many of you have had friends? Everybody in here is our friend, right? Friends are important. Why do we need friends? Spirit share, why do we need friends? For support. For support. Sometimes affirmation. Affirmation. Fun. Fun. 
Laughter. What else? Companionship. Companionship. What else? And so um, we want to make sure also when we think about a friend in need is a friend indeed, we need our friends. We agree with that. Thumbs up. Let's peel back another layer. Now we want to analyze what do you think is the story that the artist wants us to walk away with? Um, things aren't just posted in the museum for us to just look at and, you know, have some leisure conversation and go with our parents and have to be quiet in some areas and we can't touch anything and that doesn't seem like fun. But this is another way that even if you're taking your kids on a field trip to the museum, it's an opportunity for you to help them touch it without physically touching it. Okay, it's an opportunity for you to have them to touch the art. So let's look at analyze. Um, as we analyze, what we're going to do is, what does it mean to be a good friend? Okay, we've had we've shared that out. How did the artist use the art to support the title? Now that you know the title of the work, how did the artist use the art itself to support the title? What's happening in that scene? How do you know that the artist used? the art in the manner that you're going to say. What might be happening beyond the scene? They gave us a capture of it, right? What might be happening outside of that particular scene? Where does the story go next? Because we know it probably didn't end here. And then what clues make you say that? Take a minute to use that space in your um, analyze box of the quadrant. to respond to those questions, please. I'm gonna shift gears for you for a minute. Take off your participant hat, put on your facilitator of learning hat. Obviously, guys, this wouldn't happen in one day, okay? This is for training purposes only. Okay, I want to empower you to be able to go back and do this work, but the way that you empower, or I find the, one of the better ways to empower teachers is to absolutely um, let you experience what you would actually be doing with your students. And so from here, I'm gonna pause your thinking. I know that you're still thinking. The analyzed um, quadrant would probably be a day's work, okay? of just letting them pull apart, pick apart the piece of art, okay? For the produce stage, I want you to go back to the words that you chose in your evaluation. And the product is actually going to be a shape story using the words maybe that you only created in your evaluation stage, but you've come up with some other words as you analyze, you've pulled some things apart. Obviously, there would have been a lot of conversation happening, okay? Some talking and some sharing, some videos being shown, um, just to support, help support and build on the title, okay? Shift back, put on your participant hat. Very quickly, I'd like for you to produce what we've asked at the bottom. Um, before we move, I'm sorry, shift back. <laughs> Put your facilitator's hat on. Um, I would actually have the kids for the analyzing stage just to get an understanding of what they were writing or what they were thinking, especially, let's say that the teacher, um, if you decided to do this first semester, then you may not have students, if you're a kindergarten teacher, that are writing yet and that are really writing well, who can do this thinking. So acting out the word and maybe giving a story bank, maybe giving some supports up front to help those students to still be able to do this work, to still analyze, to still evaluate, to still look at art and to still give you a product. Um, being able to act out the word also seals the deal mentally for our K2 learners, okay? And so we would have been up and moving and acting. Um, with those particular words and with that analyzing point. Share one, tell me one thing you wrote in your analyzing. I said the shepherd is a friend to the lamb as he tries to save him from predators. That can be acted out, right? Okay, and so you want to have some sentences already prepared so that you can get up here and act out. You know, the shepherd was afraid, 
right? Um, the shepherd was a friend. I, holding out your hand, right? And I'm, I might make her get up and lead her with me, right? She's like, hey, <laughs> okay? So your product, real quickly, real quickly. Um, I'd like for you to just kind of sketch some kind, it can be a snake, right? It can be a snake, but just a real quick shape story to show the product, which would actually capture what we've looked at, what we've evaluated, and what we've analyzed using our five senses to meet the needs of our younger learners. So using your five senses, imagine that you're trapped inside the sculpture. We've done that. What can you see, smell, touch, taste, and feel? Use the artwork as evidence and write five to eight words to support your thinking. You have five to eight words already there to support your thinking. So we're gonna revisit the learning task because what was our learning task? We began with the end in mind. Ultimately, we did all of this in order to create what? Script description for the curator. Description for the curator, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna put it in the form of a shape story and we'll give our shape stories to the curator to enable the curator to read our stories and match it with our piece of art. Does that make sense? Okay, mm -hmm. and so those are my words there. All right, so you have to tell me what this poster here says. Okay, so you said a stick and grass. A man. Mm -hmm. A man. What else? Hers. What else? Rouse. Rouse. My son is looking like a crescent moon. But I'm gonna start over here. Fur, growls, a man, grass, what's missing? I connected it to a stick. I'm gonna do a stick down here again. Fur, grass, growls. Lindsay, give me one word from yours. Friend. Friend. Georgia, give me one word from yours. Fur. Fur. That's okay. Protects. Protects. Struggle. Struggle. Scary. Scary. Scream. Scream. Innocence. Innocence. Teeth. Calm. Teeth. Teeth. Dog. Lion. Lamb. I'm going to give this to the curator. You think we would help that curator find our work of art? Mm -hmm. Just using our shape stories? Yes? Yes. Yeah. All right. What shapes did we come up with? Did everybody do a sun? No? And those are some examples there. And so guys, what I want you to do is just find one partner who's furthest away from you real quickly. I want you to share your individual shape story with them. You have like two seconds, okay? So actually kind of do it, but editing. Let's go. Share your shape story with them. If you would, come back to your seats, please. Finish up what you're saying. All right, based on that conversation, Paula, what's one thing that our group thinks the artist wanted to tell? as it relates to a friend in need, is a friend indeed. That there is um, strength there, that there's s some strength there amongst friends trying to help each other. And I think what we saw was the, the man protecting the lamb and his friend, the dog, protecting him. Awesome. So some strength there. Okay. Caring. Caring. There's a lot of caring there, both um, in, for the dog, for the man, in coming to his protection, the man for his charge of the sheep, and for the dog. Yes. 
Cassandra. Protection came up for me as well. The man is protecting the lamb, and then the dog is protecting the man. Yes, Lindsay. Between us, we kind of had the common theme of almost a wall of safety. The friend is that wall of safety. Okay, friend is a wall of safety. Anybody have anything different that you'd like to add to the discussion? No, any final thoughts? We need our friends, right? So have we accomplished our goal? Because our goal was to help the curator. Have we accomplished that, do we think? Yeah. We've done a good job with that. Guys, I'd like to thank you guys. Today could not have happened without you. I'd like to thank you for joining me. Um, hopefully I've empowered you to take this work and go do it now. Um, and so the first piece that we we're gonna look at is actually a 3D piece. Um, of art, it's a sculpture. So what I'd like for you guys to do, as you do your 30 second look on this one, instead of standing on one side, I want you to kind of take a stroll around the work of art, look at all the details, and I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to stroll first, and then we're gonna actually talk about what you see after that 30 second stroll, okay? All right, you may begin. Just talk to me, what did you notice? What do you notice as you walked around this particular piece of work? One of the things that I, I saw that, I, when I originally looked at it, I thought that the mountain lion was trying to get to the lamb, but in walking around and seeing it from all points of view, I'm not so sure now whether he's going after the lamb or he's going after the man. It looks like he's knocked over the man and is going after the man. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just see a lot of strength. Uh -huh. Strength in the animals, strength in the man strength in the staff that's holding things up. I see protection. Mm -hmm. I see. And what makes you say that? The shepherd is protecting the lamb. Okay. And then the dog, and I wasn't sure if it was a dog, but it has a collar that says shepherd. It says shepherd, German shepherd perhaps, mm -hmm. is protecting the man by attacking the lion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any other noticing? I noticed words. I saw friends and then I think in need. Okay. And so those words made me think about the relationship of all the lamb and the shepherd, the shepherd and the dog, kind of to play off that protection. Mm -hmm. I what see about a struggle. Okay. Um, and I see a strength in like the limbs of the body, the arm and the legs. Um, and then I do see the protection of the lamb and that he does not seem aware really of the struggle that is going on above him. That he just seems unfazed by what is happening above him. You said that you saw in writing down there that it said a friend. And so that's the title of this particular work of art. It actually is a friend in need, is a friend indeed. And so who do you think is needing a friend in this particular work? 